Why do people insist on playing the lottery? They know that their chances of winning the lottery are infinitesimally small, one in many million. It costs money. It costs time. They have to stop what they're doing to buy the ticket. The most likely outcome by very far is that the whole effort will simply bring them to a loss. So would you do it? Oh, you would. And here's why. Standard theory has it that your brain releases dopamine when it predicts a win. That dopamine gives you pleasure, the best reward that the brain can give itself. And that pleasure of the prediction impels you to act. So you do what is predicted to bring good results. But that doesn't make sense in the case of the lottery. Why should you be moved by the infinitesimally small chance that you might win? Maybe because we got it all wrong. Maybe what really moves us is the memory of what was good. And that is what dopamine signals to the rest of the brain, that something is or was worth the effort. That is the new proposition of a study published in the journal Science by the team of Vijay Nambudiri at the University of California at San Francisco. According to their findings, the best account of what dopamine does for the brain is create a memorable, distinct signal that something just worked beautifully well, which now allows the rest of the brain to probe its memory of what it was just doing and put together what it was doing just then with the good outcome. So that is the new association that it learns from the experience, not how many times it played the lottery and won or lost, but the fact that every single time that somebody won the lottery, they had bought a ticket. So mystery solved, maybe. We don't care about probabilities looking forward. Thanks to what dopamine does in our brain, which I'll tell you some other time, we care about the probabilities looking back. What do you have to do that if you don't do it, there is zero chance that something you want will happen. That flexibility to choose what to do is to me the essence of intelligence. But that too is a story for another time. Subscribe to the Neuroscience Office Hour and find out soon.